Hi, this is Mohan Sanomik from Indian River State College. We are uh, continuing with our uh, fiber optic video series with the lecture number five. The title of today's lecture is uh, going to be uh, fiber optic connectors. Uh, we are going to cover a few important uh, aspects of uh, fiber optic connector. As everyone knows, fiber optic connectors are used extensively in uh, uh, fiber optics to uh, connect to uh, optical fibers. Uh, we are going to talk uh, about uh, different types of fiber optic connectors. Before that, we are go also going to describe uh, um, uh, main requirements towards uh, each fiber optic connector. We are going also to discuss fundamental elements of a fiber optic connector. And finally, at the end of the lecture, we are also going to detail the procedure for terminating a fiber optic connector on an optical fiber. We are also going to show uh, uh, or demonstrate that uh, uh, on a, on a, on a sh in a short video. And finally, uh, we will be also talking about the inspection and the cleaning uh, process that needs to be uh, applied to each uh, fiber optic connector before it is installed and also uh, after it's installed onto the uh, optical fiber. So uh, let's start talking first a little bit about the fiber optic connections. So fiber optic connections uh, are uh, connections that are used to uh, establish uh, a connection between the various parts of the of a fiber optic link. Uh, on this specific slide, on the bottom of the, sl the slide, uh, uh, an, uh, a specific fiber optic link is uh, shown as as we can see there's a few different types of connections that can be established on a fiber optic link and they can be uh, classified into uh, three groups the first is uh, so-called fiber optic splices where uh, a bare fiber is connected directly onto uh, another uh, piece of a bare fiber and then the second type of second category of a connection uh, are uh, uh, fiber optic con connectors uh, that uh, uh, can uh, uh, connect uh, optical fiber onto a transmitter or to a receiver or also two uh, op uh, optical fibers can be connected with uh, uh, by mating two uh, connectors. And finally, a uh, uh, third category of connections are so-called couplers that are also going to be discussed in the future. Uh, again, uh, the main topic of today's lecture is to discuss uh, fiber optic connectors, one of the three categories that are listed on this, uh, on this slide. The following slide shows uh, or describes uh, rather uh, uh, briefly each of these different uh, uh, three types of uh, fiber optic connections. So in the case of a fiber optic slides, we are talking about some sort of permanent joint that's been established between the two fibers or two groups of the fibers. So here we uh, have a bare fiber on one side and a bare fiber on the other side. And those two bare fibers are then uh, merged into each other and a permanent joint between uh, the two uh, has been established. In the case of fiber optic connectors, we are talking uh, about uh, a joint that does not have to be necessarily permanent. So we're talking about uh, uh, two connectors that are mating into each other that can also be disconnected so the join between the two is not permanent. Fiber optic connectors uh, would uh, enable easy coupling and uncoupling of optical fibers and also sometimes resemble familiar electrical plugs or sockets that are uh, 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 used in uh, many, uh, many uh, uh, areas of, uh, of electronics. And finally, the third category are so-called fiber optic uh, couplers. Uh, there we are talking about distribution of the optical signal from a single fiber into several fibers or combining optical signals from several fibers into one fiber. Each of these uh, three uh, uh, connections are shown on the bottom of this slide. Uh, in the bottom left corner, we have uh, 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 an optical uh, coupler uh, as you can see here, we have an, uh, uh, on one side we have a single, uh, single uh, optical fiber, single connection that's then being split into two connections on the other side uh, by the use of, uh, of an optical fiber. Uh, in the middle bottom, we have different types of fiber optic connectors. Uh, and finally, on the top right side, uh, we have a... Uh, 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 a screenshot of, uh, of a, a, an optical splicer where you can see two bare fibers that are being brought into, uh, brought into a close proximity and then we're using in this case uh, uh, an electric arc 
uh, to uh, basically uh, melt the glass between the two fibers uh, in order to establish uh, so-called optical uh, splice. In this case, we're talking about the fusion process of a fusion splicing. Let's now focus on uh, fiber optic uh, connectors. So we are talking about uh, a disconnectable device that is used to connect a fiber to a source, detector, or another fiber. Uh, this type of uh, device is designed to be mated and demated many times. So we are talking about uh, about uh, a joint that does not have to be a permanent, uh, but it can be uh, the the connection can also always be uh, 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 removed. In other words, the two connectors can be uh, disconnected. Uh, there are certain uh, standards, uh, such as the standard TIA 568-B that would stay the maximum uh, allowable loss per mated pair, pair of the connectors. Uh, it turns out to be equal to 0.75 dB max. So every time uh, we establish connection uh, using the connectors, we want to make sure that we abide by this standard. In other words, the connection uh, uh, um, has to measure uh, below uh, the maximum allowable loss of 0.75 dB. On the, uh, right hand side of this uh, slide, uh, uh, four different types of uh, fiber optic connectors are also shown. These are four more uh, main, uh, these are four uh, uh, most popular types of the connectors uh, uh, ST connector, SC connector, LC connector, and finally MT uh, RJ connectors. Uh, in addition to these four, uh, most popular types of the connectors. There is a, a variety of other types of connectors. Uh, uh, many different manufacturers uh, have their own type of, uh, of uh, connectors, and each of these would also be uh, briefly described uh, described on the on the slides that follow. So, what would be uh, main connector uh, requirements? Requirements. What what are the requirements that are placed uh, towards a fiber optic connector? Uh, there's a few uh, desirable features that uh, um, um, each uh, fiber optic connector should have. Number one, low loss. Uh, in other words, the connector or splice should cause little loss of optical power across the junction. So uh, uh, that's a uh, very important uh, parameter. On the previous slide, we mentioned that uh, loss in a, a pair of um, uh, two mated connectors should be a ma maximum of 0.75 dB. Uh, second requirement is easy installation. The connector should be easily or uh, rapidly installed without need for extensive, extensive special tools, tools or cra uh, training. Uh, uh, later on we'll be uh, talking about different uh, ways of uh, installing the connector onto the uh, bare optical fiber and we'll see a few uh, different techniques uh, that have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, third requirement is repeatability. The connector should be able to uh, be connected and disconnected many times without changes in loss. Uh, that's actually one of the uh, most important requirements that are uh, placed towards the uh, fiber optic connectors. Uh, consistency is another important uh, requirement. There should be no variation in loss. Loss should be consistent whenever a connector is applied to a fiber. And finally, there is also economic requirements. In other words, the connector should be inexpensive, both in itself and in the special, special application tooling. There are many different uh, uh, styles of fiber optic uh, connectors. Connectors may be described in many different ways, depending on the criteria that is used. And uh, each of these basic styles uh, would include variables such as finishing technique, uh, ferrule type, uh, etc. Each of these finishing techniques and ferrule types will be described on the following slides. The connector quality can be based on uh, bore quality, thermal properties, and mechanical properties. So each of these different aspects have to be taken into account uh, uh, when the connector is, uh, is designed so that uh, the connector uh, can satisfy certain requirements in a specific application. Uh, it uh, also is important to mention that uh, um, uh, there is a serious lack of standardization in uh, uh, this area. Uh, that's a serious problem throughout the industry and the military. Uh, you uh, will be exposed to uh, uh, this uh, issue. You'll see that we have a whole bunch of different types of fiber optic connectors that are out there and being used in uh, applications. Almost every uh, ev every uh, serious manufacturer has its own 
uh, their or their own uh, uh, type of uh, a connector that poses a serious problem uh, because uh, there is certain uh, uh, incompatibility that exists g exists in the in the uh, in the field where you know different types of connectors cannot be used uh, in a in the same application. What would be the basic considerations that would have to be taken into account? Number one, threaded connectors can cause big problems when excessive torque is used. You'll see that some of these uh, fiber optic connectors have uh, uh, threads and uh, that may be a disadvantage. Uh, on the other side, you know, there's a, a, a few different types of uh, keyed connectors that would allow for consistent and repeatable alignment. And finally, as more uh, fiber is installed, termination space will become more and more valuable. So, in other words, uh, uh, we would want to reduce the size of the connector, uh, uh, especially in applications where short distances are uh, 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 applicable. And uh, let's say we are running a very short distances uh, from panel to panel, uh, just a few feet, and, and in those cases, uh, 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 the size of the connector may uh, play an important role, especially if there's many connectors across the panel that has a, a certain limited limited space. So all these different uh, aspects have to be taken into account in uh, the selection of a specific style of a fiber optic connector, uh, so that a uh, uh, fiber optic connector that has been uh, uh, selected uh, would meet all the requirements of a specific application. So on this slide we want to address uh, two important uh, uh, devices that are also being used in a, in a fiber optic connector world uh, and those would be patch cords and so-called pigtails. So uh, as a fiber optic technician you'll, you are going to come across these two important uh, 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 entities the patch cords uh, that are shown here uh, uh, represent relatively short sections of jacketed or buffered fiber cable that are generally used to connect items of end equi equipment. A patch cord will have a connector at each end and very often these types of patch cords are used as a test cables uh, to uh, uh, perform certain uh, fiber optic measurements uh, in a, in a, uh, out in the field. On the other side, the pigtails uh, um, are basically sections of cable with a connector only at one end, which is the end to be connected uh, to the end equipment. On the other side uh, of the pigtail, we have a bare fiber that is to be spliced to the cable that enters from the field. So pigtails are often configured in a, an arrangement called breakout cable, where we have multiple pigtails contained within a sheath and uh, Pigtails or breakout cables have become less prevalent uh, in recent years because installers are terminating the field cable directly to many equipment items. So why we are using the pigtails? Well, uh, you know, in certain applications, you do not want to uh, deal with the installation of the uh, connector for uh, various reasons. You may not have an efficient uh, way of installing the connector uh, that would uh, result in a, in a low uh, loss. So you want to rely on a, a fiber uh, uh, optic uh, connector manufacturer uh, and uh, their ability to install the connector. Uh, so if you are a fiber optic technician who uh, uh, mostly is doing uh, fiber optic splicing and you don't want to deal with the connectors, then the pigtail may be a good option for you because uh, the only uh, 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 procedure that you're going to be uh, uh, performing out in the field would, is, would be uh, splicing. So if you have a bare fiber that you have to uh, uh, terminate with a connector, you will not be installing a connector directly onto the fiber, but you're going to be using a, a pigtail, uh, as the one shown here on, the, on this slide, to basically splice the pigtail directly onto the bare fiber. And then by doing that on the other side, you will have a fiber optic connector that's being already pre-installed. Uh, so that is the main reason for using the, using the pigtails. Another important aspect of, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, fiber optic connector design is connector end finish. Uh, we are talking about the end face of the connector. The most common types of uh, finishes would be the flat finish, uh, so-called physical contact or PC, and finally angled physical contact, contact or APC. So why is this important? If you go back to the foundations of uh, photonics when we talked about reflections of light and refraction. If you're looking at the flat end finish, you see that uh, in this case the, the, the end face is flat, 
so uh, the whole uh, surf, uh, contact surface area is um, is uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty large. So that poses the problem. So if you are trying to uh, join the two uh, two end faces of the two connectors you're running a risk of uh, having a small air gap uh, exactly in the area of the of the core. So the core here is shown in, in, in a yellow color and you see that the surface contact of the core is significantly smaller, is significantly smaller than the surface con contact of the entire end phase. So if there is a even small issue with the flatness of these two end phases, uh, 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 that may result in a, in a small air gap that's gonna exist between the two cores uh, at the end of each connector and we know that uh, air gap is basically different uh, index of refraction so when the light is traveling through a glass core from uh, let's say left side uh, uh, tor towards the right when it uh, when the light uh, uh, reaches that uh, small air gap uh, refraction is going to occur and we're going to have a significant leakage of a, of a, of a, of a power due to the fact that the light is going to be refracted when it is uh, 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 propagating from uh, glass through the air and then back into the glass. In order to reduce the issue with the, that, that exists with the flat end finish, uh, um, there's another type of end phase uh, that's been, uh, uh, that, that has become a standard in uh, 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 optical uh, fibers, and that's the physical contact. It's shown here uh, in the middle uh, on, the, on the second picture. So we see here that instead of the flat end phase of uh, the two connectors, we have, in a sense, a rounded phase where, uh, or a convex phase where the, the glass core is, uh, uh, is the, is the um, uh, touching point. Uh, so in this case here we are not relying on the on a, on a flatness of the entire end phase but rather just on the flatness of, of the two uh, glass cores. So in uh, other words uh, we are dealing with the finish technique where a ferrule or the end phase of the connector is domed with a high precision uh, convex spherical end surface and uh, uh, by doing that we um, uh, um, are assured that we have a consistent uh, low loss than uh, in the case of a flat end phase connectors. Uh, this is also very important because this is going to reduce the back reflection to 30 dB uh, and uh, the, the uh, air spa space between the two glass cores will virtually be completely uh, eliminated when uh, the two connectors are made into, into, each, uh, into each other. Uh, I mentioned here the uh, back reflection, not only that light, uh, uh, if, let's say there is an air gap between the two, uh, two uh, end phases of the connectors, that air gap won't just uh, create a refraction and a leakage of the power, uh, it's going to also um, create a certain reflection of the power back into the transmitter which uh, poses a serious problem uh, if we are dealing with high powers even uh, smaller reflected powers may uh, create damage to our optical source uh, or transmitter uh, uh, so uh, it's very important uh, to uh, take into account this important aspect of uh, fiber optic uh, design this has been uh, especially addressed or uh, uh, mitigated to so-called angled physical contact that's shown here uh, in the third picture on the bottom. So in this case here, not only that we have a physical contact with a convex spherical end surface, but also uh, the whole uh, uh, end of the two uh, glass cores is also uh, created at, at, at an angle. So in the case of any kind of reflection that uh, is going to uh, um, uh, appear at, a, at the uh, interface between the two glass cores, that black back reflection will not go back into the power source, but it's going to be reflected in some other, uh, in some other direction. Uh, so uh, we are going to reduce the amount of back reflection into the optical source by using this type of so-called angled physical contact. Yet another important uh, aspect of the uh, of the uh, optical fiber connector design is. Uh, a, a type of a uh, ferrule or uh, rather a material that is being that's been used to create the ferrule so by ferrule we mean the end face of the connector that's shown here in a in a white color so the ferrule uh, the main main uh, uh, um, purpose of the ferrule is to provide mechanical stability to the end face of the connector that is going to result in a uh, in many uh, mating demating uh, uh, cycles. Uh, obviously fiber optic connectors here are the devices that are going to be connected and disconnected many times so we want to make sure that 
the whole mechanical stress that's been induced during the whole process of mating and demating would uh, not cause any kind of uh, damage to the end phase. So uh, there's a few different types of uh, ferulous or, uh, or uh, end uh, phases or uh, uh, these end ends of the connectors that are being used uh, or materials that are being used to make them. Uh, ceramic ferrules are uh, very common. They offer the best performance and are preferred for use on both multi-mode and uh, single-mode fibers. Uh, what are the main uh, uh, properties of uh, ceramic ferrules? Uh, number one, they are very strong, they have a good precision, they have a very, uh, a very good thermal and mechanical properties. In other words, the performance does not vary due to the temperature or uh, any other environmental fluctuations. Uh, obviously, a disadvantage uh, of uh, using ceramics is the cost. This type of, uh, of uh, uh, ferrules are uh, most expensive. Uh, and uh, it's also important to mention that there's two different types of uh, ceramic ferrules that are either make, made out of zirconia or alumina. Uh, alumina ceramic uh, produces a rough polish due to its chemical makeup. Uh, on the other side, zirconia uh, 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 ferrule produces highly polished connectors and is preferred in the industry. So here we are talking about uh, most popular type of, uh, of uh, material that uh, uh, has been used to make uh, connector ferrule, uh, uh, but uh, as I said, uh, an important uh, uh, aspect or disadvantage in this case is the cost as we are dealing with the most expensive type of material that's going to be used to make a connector ferrule. If you are um, uh, if uh, if you are price sensitive, there's also other types of uh, materials that can be used to make a connector ferrule. Uh, uh, one is a, a stainless steel. In this case, we are talking about the middle grade type of uh, ferrule that would provide quality nearly equal to the ceramic, but the thermal performance may be considerably, uh, considerably less uh, reliable. So obviously, since we are dealing with the stainless uh, steel, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, um, a certain uh, expansion of the stainless steel or uh, you know other important thermal uh, disadvantages over the over the ceramic uh, because uh, 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 stainless steel is not such a good thermal conductor as a as a ceramic so these types of uh, uh, connectors that are uh, that uh, have stainless steel made ferrules may be best suited in applications where temperature is not a critical uh, factor in other words the temperature is a uh, as a stable, op uh, uh, stable, uh, the, the whole operating environment does not uh, 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 does not uh, take uh, into account any kind of uh, temperature fluctuations. Uh, so, uh, what would be the advantages of uh, of the stainless steel uh, ferrules? Uh, they are stronger than ceramic, and they are less susceptible to the breakage and the cracking. Uh, again, disadvantage is the fact that. Uh, they are less thermally stable than uh, than a ceramics based uh, ferrules. And finally, uh, again, if you uh, are especially uh, price sensitive and you are looking for a ferrule or a connector that is uh, that is cheap, uh, that's least expensive. In such a case, you are gonna probably uh, select a, a ferrule that's made out of plastic. Obviously, in uh, such a case, uh, uh, reliability may be an issue because uh, the plastic is, uh, in general, uh, uh, less mechanically strong than the ceramics or stainless steel, but as I said, is uh, cheap. Also, if you don't uh, worry about the reliability of the of the connector, but you are either price sensitive, uh, you would uh, uh, you also have an option to uh, select connectors that uh, uh, have uh, ferrules made uh, out of plastic. Let's focus our attention to a few important styles of uh, fiber optic connectors that are widely popular popular in, uh, in the fiber optics industry. Uh, we are going to describe briefly each of these different types of, of uh, connectors. We are going to start with the ST fiber optic connector. Uh, ST stands for single terminus. This type of connector has been uh, developed by uh, AT&T Bell Laboratories uh, for use with uh, single mode or multi-mode fibers. Uh, we are talking about a keyed type of uh, connector that uh, has a bayonet coupling preferred in uh, uh, different uh, applications where severe, severe vibrations are not expected. Uh, this is pr probably most popular and widely used connector in local area networks in the test equipment and uh, uh, some other applications. 
uh, we are dealing again with the key uh, uh, connectors, the key feature, feature ensures that the fiber is always inserted to the mating bushing with the same orientation. And finally, the bayonet coupling prevents crashing due to uh, over tightening. So uh, we don't have threads here. So we are not relying on a torque uh, uh, process during, that, uh, during uh, um, the connection. So we have a key performance that uh, obviously is advantage over connectors that have, uh, that have threads. Another popular type of fiber optic connector is so-called FC uh, connector, uh, stands for uh, field connector. This connector has been uh, developed by uh, Japanese, by Nippon uh, Telephone and Telegraph for telecommunications and it's used in a, 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 a MCI, by MCI in a, their fiber optic telephone networks back in 1980s. So it's a relatively uh, old type of connector with the threads. So we have a threaded coupling feature that's similar to the SMA connectors that are uh, mainly used in a, a microwave or RF uh, uh, communications. Uh, this connector has advantage over the previously described uh, connector uh, in the sense that uh, uh, it is uh, that that it, that is more stable in a high vibration environments. Uh, on the other side, the threads would be difficult to over tighten because. Uh, stops have been installed to obtain, obtain a repeatable torque. This type of connector is available both in a single mode and uh, multi-mode applications. SC fiber optic connector is uh, 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 um, developed by NTT. Uh, SC stands for subscriber connector. It gained popularity uh, uh, back in 1990s. Uh, it can be used both for single mode and uh, multi-mode applications. In this case, we are dealing with a push-pull engagement, so we don't have a keyed feature or uh, threads, uh, but the connectors are made in using push-pull engagement. Uh, this type of connector is designed to be uh, pull-proof, so a slight pull on the cable will not disengage the connections, so that ensures certain reliability of the, of the, of the connection. Uh, this type of connector is a strong competitor to the FC and ST connectors that are described on the previous two slides. Uh, uh, there's a few uh, important reasons why is that. First of all, it's a, this connector uh, have a, 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 a ease of a, a, a construction uh, and due to the ease of the of construction in uh, certain applications, it can be used in a, a duplex for, uh, configurations. Uh, uh, and it's uh, widely popular. We will gonna be we are gonna be using these types of connectors in our labs uh, to uh, uh, um, establish certain uh, uh, connections in a, in a, in a fiber optic links. And finally, uh, LC fiber optic connector is another uh, American-made type of uh, fiber optic connector designed by uh, by Bell uh, and. Uh, and um, it uses convenient operation modular jack uh, RJ uh, that's used to uh, lash the two connectors into each other. Uh, this type of connector can improve the, uh, the density of uh, optical fiber connectors in the optical fiber distribution uh, frame because it, its uh, uh, size is uh, uh, relatively uh, small. Uh, LC fiber optic connector uh, uses ceramic ferrule uh, it is easily terminated with any kind of adhesive. It has a good performance and is uh, highly favored for uh, single mode applications. We are also going to mention two uh, less popular types of uh, connectors that uh, provide certain legacy. Uh, uh, those would be SMA fiber optic connector and uh, biconic fiber optic connector that are shown in these two slides. So SMA connector uh, originally designed by uh, Amphenol uh, it's using threaded coupling nut without a keying device. There's two different uh, styles, style 905 and 906, uh, briefly described on uh, uh, this uh, uh, on this uh, slide. Here, this, uh, the ferrule is uh, made out of uh, of, uh, of uh, steel, and uh, this type of connector is used for uh, multi-mode applications. We also have uh, uh, another version of uh, of uh, SMA fiber optic connector. Uh, uh, with a ceramic ferrule that is being used for uh, single mode applications. Uh, the primary problem uh, with this connector uh, is the crashing. Uh, 
due to the over tightening of the threads so uh, we don't have any uh, any uh, mechanism that would uh, that would prevent that so you pretty much rely on a torque that's going to be applied when you are uh, uh, mating this connector into another into another uh, SMA connector biconic fiber connector uh, is named for uh, for uh, its uh, conical shape it's been in, it's been popular back in, back in 1980s so this is an uh, one of the oldest types of uh, fiber optic uh, connectors um, this uh, type of connector uh, has been uh, used on single mode fibers uh, although they you they can be used both in single mode and multi mode applications obviously here we are uh, dealing with a connector that's not keyed uh, and uh, um, early problems with the repeatability and the crushing due to the over tightening uh, were not uh, uh, posed a serious uh, problem in many many applications and uh, uh, as a result uh, uh, this uh, connector has been later on redesigned to uh, have a keen feature so again uh, one of the legacy connectors that you may come across uh, if you are maintaining uh, older uh, types of uh, fiber optic uh, uh, fiber optic links okay now that we uh, introduced uh, uh, fiber optic connectors from uh, di different aspects uh, now that we uh, talked about the requirements uh, that uh, are placed towards the fiber optic connectors we also saw different styles of the fiber optic connectors we also talked about end phase of a fiber optic connector and its importance uh, uh, in, uh, um, the, uh, in the joint between the two connectors. Uh, we also want to uh, put uh, into perspective uh, the fiber optic connector in the entire fiber optic link. So uh, the first important aspect uh, to uh, be briefly elaborated is the loss at a fiber optic connection. Obviously the goal of uh, um, um, a fiber optic connection among others is also minimizing the loss uh, and that's actually a very important and critical requirement uh, in the performance of a fiber optic link. So every connection, um, every uh, 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 pair of mated uh, uh, connectors is a possible point of uh, failure and for that reason extreme care must be taken when terminating and connecting uh, two connectors. So understanding the proper building methods what makes a quality end phase, uh, proper cleaning processes, test methodologies are all important aspects that have to be taken to account and properly addressed uh, for, the, uh, the, uh, for the goal of a long-term reliability of a fiber optic link. So what's shown on this slide on the bottom is basically two, uh, uh, two um, uh, connectors, simplified version, right? where we have um, a physical contact between the two uh, ferrules of the, of the two connectors and uh, we see how the light propagates uh, along the uh, uh, fiber or along the uh, left connector and then uh, it's uh, hitting the uh, uh, dirt or contamination between the two uh, end faces. That dirt is different material with different index of refraction that is going to cause uh, a certain back reflection and potential damage uh, in the optical source on the left side. So uh, th uh, this is just uh, um, uh, one example, one uh, possible case scenario uh, or an important issue that needs to be addressed when we are talking about fiber optic connections and that is the contamination or dirt on the end face of a connector. So every time we are uh, mating two connectors we want to make sure that we uh, uh, properly inspected the end face and properly cleaned it so that we avoid any kind of contamination or dirt on the end face of the connector. So on the previous slide we briefly elaborated uh, importance of having two end faces of the connectors being uh, completely cleaned uh, and uh, we also talk a little bit about uh, the importance of uh, doing uh, uh, inspection, visual inspection of the end face of the two connectors. So the next question uh, that needs to be raised is how this visual inspector inspection is being performed. So once more uh, to uh, uh, review before any uh, optical connection is made we should inspect the end phase using at least a, 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 a 200 uh, magnification microscope before mating the two uh, connectors. 
dust particles that uh, uh, can uh, exist, can be present on, at the end phase, would have a negative charge and the glass and ferrule on the end phase are dielectrics. So the dust particle is attracted to the end phase of the connector. That's why we are uh, ending up with a huge pres presence of dust particles on the end phase. One dust particle makes, uh, uh, once that's the dust particle makes contact with the end phase, an ionic bond is made. And in order to break that ionic bond, a fiber optic preparation of fluid with static dissipating properties should be used to clean the end phase. So all uh, these are important aspects that should be that uh, a fiber optic te technician should be aware of, uh, and especially importance of an end phase of connector uh, being clean uh, before uh, the two connectors are made and into each other. So how is the connector inspection uh, uh, and cleaning performed? So any contamination in a fiber optic connection, as already elaborated, can cause the failure of the component or failure of the whole system. The back reflections are especially important and critical because, the, because if we are dealing with high powers uh, of the, uh, that are being sent over the optical fiber, uh, the back reflection, uh, reflection back into the optical source may uh, cause a serious damage of a laser system or its important uh, uh, features. Uh, microscopic dust particles can also cause a variety of problems for optical connections. And for example, a particle that uh, partially or completely blocks the core generates strong back reflections, which can cause instability in the laser system, as, uh, as already mentioned. So how is optical fiber uh, connector uh, inspection and cleaning uh, uh, performed? Uh, so once more, let's review uh, what we talked uh, on the previous slide. Any contamination in a fiber optic connection can cause a failure of the component or failure of the whole system. We're going to uh, elaborate this a little further. Uh, obviously, on the end phase, you may have a whole bunch of dust particles that can cause a vari variety of uh, uh, problems in an optical fiber li link. Uh, for example, if you have dust particles uh, sitting on the end phase when the two connectors are mated into each other, uh, uh, those dust particles, they have different uh, properties uh, that would uh, cause certain uh, back reflections. So if the light hits the dust particle due to uh, different optical uh, properties of the, of the dust uh, compared to the, to the glass, uh, uh, reflections are going to uh, be generated, especially the back reflections is critical because uh, when the back reflections go, uh, go uh, when the light that's being back reflected goes back into the, uh, into the power source, into a laser system at high power levels, it can uh, create a serious instability uh, and in, uh, in extreme cases even a damage of the, of the laser system. Uh, even if we are dealing with a particle that's only situated on the cladding or the edge of the end phase, it can still cause an air gap or misalignment between the fiber cores, which would significantly degrade the optical signal. Uh, here's an example. If you're dealing with a uh, one micron, my micro, one micrometer uh, size of a dust particle on a single mode core, uh, that type of that dust particle can block up to 1% of the light. So we're dealing with a 0 0.05 dB loss. Uh, nine micrometer spec that is still too small to see without a microscope can completely block the fiber core. These contaminants can be more difficult to remove than dust particles. So uh, um, what we see on this slide are, uh, is the basically uh, 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 importance of uh, end phases being uh, properly uh, uh, inspected and uh, uh, cleaned and uh, serious, serious consequences if uh, that uh, type of uh, uh, inspection and cleaning procedure is uh, not uh, conducted. So in addition to uh, dust, there's also other types of contamination that may uh, also occur at the end phase and uh, should be cleaned uh, 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 using uh, proper uh, cleaning uh, procedure. For example, we may have oils uh, frequently from human hands. If the uh, end phase of a connector has been touched uh, with a finger, uh, the fingerprint uh, 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 is going to uh, uh, contain certain oils. We can also have certain film residues uh, that are a uh, result of uh, certain vapors in the air. We can have powdery coatings that are left after water and other solvents are uh, uh, evaporated, etc. So 
if we are uh, uh, talking about single mode fiber connectors, they would be more sensitive to the dust, dirt, and other contaminants than standard electrical connectors or even multi-mode optical connectors, obviously due to the size of the, of the glass core. So it's very important for the uh, connectors to always uh, 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 carry uh, dust caps uh, that would prevent uh, 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 collect, connect, collection of, uh, of the dust, but you also have to be a very, uh, uh, you, you also have to uh, understand that the dust caps don't provide a full, uh, full uh, uh, protection of the uh, end phase. Even if they are installed on a connector optical contacts, they do not ensure that the connector's end phase is clean, cleaned and ready to use. So if you have a connector uh, with a dust cap, cap installed, uh, you also still want to make sure that uh, that end phase is properly uh, visually inspected and cleaned. To properly uh, conduct optical fiber connector inspection, we are going to be using uh, microscopes with certain magnifications. Uh, usually uh, two types of uh, fiber microscopes are used in, uh, in, the, in the practice. One is fiber optic termination inspection and the other is for the inspection of installed connectors on the patch panels and hardware devices. We are talking about uh, fiber uh, uh, microscopes with mag magnification levels of either 200 uh, uh, or uh, 400 if we are dealing with a single mode, single mode fiber applications. Uh, sometimes uh, 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 low-cost fiber, fiber microscopes with a, a magnification of 100 are also used and often included in most uh, uh, fiber optic cable termination kits, uh, but you would use this type of uh, uh, fiber microscope for multi-mode fiber termination inspection on field installable uh, connectors. This slide visually presents uh, one type of uh, fiber optic uh, um, uh, uh, inspection microscope. We are dealing with a desktop, desktop fiber optic video inspection microscope uh, that uh, has a 9 inch black and white monitor that's attached to the scope with a 4 feet video cable. Uh, so here we are dealing with a little uh, bulkier type of uh, 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 microscope uh, and due, due to a uh, bulk volume, this type of uh, microscope is typically used in production environments and labs. So usually you would not be uh, taking this type of uh, microscope out on the field if you need to perform a, a visual inspective, inspection of fiber optic uh, connectors uh, uh, directly on the site. Uh, there are two versions of uh, this type of uh, desktop microscope. Uh, with two different types of magnification, either 200 or uh, 400. To uh, uh, cover uh, applications in the, in the field, uh, very often portable types of fiber optic scopes are used as the one shown on this picture. So uh, here we are dealing with a microscope with a universal adapter that's a versatile instrument used to inspect, inspect fiber optic connectors. They can be used for both multi-mode and uh, single mode applications. Uh, you may have different types of uh, adapters for different types of uh, uh, connectors. Uh, very often, a degree angle adapter can be used for inspecting angled connectors, and uh, magnifications are also either uh, 200 or 400. So we have different versions uh, of uh, this type of uh, portable optic scope uh, with different uh, magnifications. Is another type of uh, very popular type of fiber scope that's used uh, in the field. This is the type of fiber scope that uh, we have in our lab and you uh, will be using in our fiber optic lab if, uh, uh, if you are going to be doing hands-on uh, uh, labs with, uh, uh, here at uh, uh, Indian River State College. So we are dealing with a coaxial illuminated handheld fiber scope. Uh, it's a low-cost type of microscope. It's uh, also available in two versions with uh, either 200 or 400 magnification. Um, here we are using a, a white LED light to provide coaxial illumination to the connector end faces for better visibility. Uh, this method of uh, illumination produces high resolution detail of the end phase scratches, defects and contamination. Uh, so uh, once uh, uh, end phase is illuminated, you can see different types of scratches or oils or any kind of contaminants that would uh, uh, be, over, uh, be present over the end phase. You can also uh, distinguish the, the, uh, the uh, certain uh, basic constituents of the, of the end phase of the ferrule or, or the ferrule of the, uh, of the connector. Uh, uh, um, this type of handheld hand uh, fiber scope 
uh, uh, uses universal 2.5 millimeter adapter as well as uh, uh, um, other uh, types of uh, connector styles. Uh, these inspection devices are natural choice for fiber optic in installation contractors. So many fiber optic technicians would be using this type of, uh, of the uh, fiber scope out in the field. There are also certain uh, um, uh, visual inspection tools that are specifically ta tailored for, uh, uh, for certain uh, applications. So for example, if you're dealing with uh, fiber connectors that uh, are installed on the patch panels or uh, some sort of hardware devices. Uh, in such a case, we're going to be using a specific type of so-called ferrule inspection scopes that are shown uh, here. So here we are dealing with a video fiber optics uh, microscope that include a handheld LCD display unit and a small lightweight probe that contains a long life LED light source and a CCD video camera. So uh, we are using the probe uh, uh, with an adapter tip that mates into the connector and then projects a crisp, clear image of a microscopic debris uh, at the end phase uh, uh, of the connector and also a certain damages that may uh, be present at the end phase of the connectors. And all that is obviously seen on the LCD display of uh, this type of uh, uh, scope as shown here in the, uh, on this slide. Uh, uh, some features of uh, these types of devices are easy inspection of installed connectors. We can uh, uh, do inspection both of multi-mode and single-mode uh, 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 applications. There's no hazards of inspecting live fibers. Uh, clear images uh, of the microscopic debris can be uh, seen. Uh, also damages can be uh, seen. So uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, advantages of this type of scope that's going to be used again in a specific application when you don't have a lot of space uh, to directly mate uh, a certain scope uh, onto the uh, optical fiber, uh, but rather use some sort of probe that has a, a, a smaller uh, connecting uh, uh, end phase uh, that can uh, match onto a specific uh, uh, connector that needs to be inspected. This slide presents different types of uh, uh, contamination conditions that you may come across uh, the end phase of the uh, optical uh, fiber. Uh, we said uh, previously that uh, uh, we may have dust particles, we may have oils, we may have uh, certain uh, uh, other residues. Uh, uh, also, you may uh, come across certain scratches uh, over the end phase. So again, this slide uh, uh, briefly um, uh, presents on the multiple uh, pictures different types of uh, uh, contamination conditions. Uh, uh, so, for example, on uh, on uh, the picture A, we uh, see a clean, a clean end face uh, where uh, you can uh, basically identify the core uh, and the cladding. And then, as you are moving to uh, uh, pictures C, D, E, uh, all the way through uh, L, uh, you can see different types of uh, uh, conditions from uh, 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 contamination with the dust particles. Uh, 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 some sort of liquid contamination on the picture D, uh, and then uh, alcohol residue on the picture F, um, um, a dry residue on the picture H, etc. So uh, my suggestion would be to spend some time on this specific slide to kind of learn different types of uh, uh, conditions and uh, so that uh, you develop a skill to identify uh, what's uh, what's on the end phase uh, for proper uh, proper uh, uh, in, uh, uh, inspection and a proper cleaning and obviously proper reporting of certain contamination that may exist on the end phase uh, of a fiber optic connector. Once a fiber optic connector has been uh, visually inspected, the next step would be uh, to uh, uh, perform a, a specific uh, cleaning procedure of the end phase of the fiber optic connector. Uh, so this slide uh, outlines uh, a general procedure that should be applied uh, um, um, to uh, properly clean the uh, uh, end uh, phase. So each uh, specific company uh, that uh, deals with uh, fiber optic uh, uh, connections uh, or um, installation of the fiber optic connectors would uh, have their own uh, uh, operating uh, procedure or cleaning procedure. Uh, uh, so this is a kind of a one specific example that can be used as a reference to uh, uh, any kind of uh, 
uh, fiber optic uh, uh, cleaning uh, uh, procedure. So all these different procedures may vary, but they have uh, one thing in common, and those of the multiple steps that require uh, a fiber optic technician uh, to clean, inspect, and then post uh, test uh, the uh, the connector. Uh, with instructions to go from one cleaning method to another uh, in the case of the first uh, does not produce uh, acceptable results. So usually you start with some sort of dry cleaning um, um, uh, that uh, follows uh, the, uh, the visual inspection. If the dry cleaning does not uh, produce uh, acceptable uh, results, you may repeat the dry clean, cleaning for a few times and uh, uh, Ultimately, you may resort to the to the wet cleaning uh, if um, the end phase is still uh, uh, covered by a certain uh, by a certain uh, contamination. And finally, uh, you're gonna uh, perform a final inspection to uh, confirm that the cleaning procedure produced acceptable results uh, uh, in terms of uh, removal of the uh, of any kind of contamination on it. This slide briefly presents what kind of uh, uh, cleaning tools are uh, used uh, out in the field. So again, we can uh, we, we have two different types of uh, cleaning, uh, either dry cleaning uh, techniques or wet cleaning techniques. Wet cleaning techniques are usually applied when dry cleaning that didn't work. In such a case, uh, uh, you would uh, use uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean the end phase of the connector. Uh, uh, it's also important to mention that improper cleaning can cause damage to the equipment, so it's, you want to make sure that you are performing the cleaning procedure in a proper way. There, there are many videos out there that, uh, 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 that uh, uh, demonstrate uh, the fiber optic cleaning uh, uh, techniques. You are also going to be uh, uh, practicing this type of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, procedures in a, in, a, in, a, in a lab during the training. So it's important to uh, build a certain uh, uh, background or a certain uh, knowledge of the cleaning techniques before you uh, go to the next step, which is going to be uh, practically learning how to how to uh, uh, clean the end phase of the connector in a proper way. It's also important to mention that there are certain concerns related to the use of isopropyl alcohol during the cleaning. So this slide uh, briefly briefly elaborates on that uh, uh, after. Um, uh, isopropyl alcohol has been uh, used, uh, there may be certain residuals that are left that can be used as a transport mechanism for loose dirt on the end phase. Uh, so it is important to address that issue. Uh, uh, usually uh, the way how it, that's to be uh, addressed is uh, to uh, uh, um, apply another dry cleaning technique where any kind of residuals from, uh, from uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, will be finally removed uh, before the final inspection. What would be the tools that are used for the cleaning? There are many different tools. As I said uh, on this uh, uh, slide, we see uh, many of them uh, uh, presented on the, on the right side of the slide. Uh, uh, these types of tools include uh, different types of uh, lint-free wipes and swabs, uh, cartridge, pocket-styled cleaners, uh, etc. So uh, each of these uh, has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages and uh, you should be familiar with uh, uh, when a specific tools are going to be used and what specific application uh, and uh, you know in what scenario you know with what kind of contamination each of these is going to be used. So to briefly summarize uh, lecture number five uh, today we talked about fiber optic connectors. Fiber optic connector is an important part of a fiber optic link, so it's very important to uh, understand uh, uh, specifics of a fiber optic connectors. So we talked about the uh, role of uh, fiber optic connectors in a fiber optic link. Uh, we uh, briefly elaborated on the requirements uh, uh, that a, a fiber optic connector has to uh, uh, meet. Uh, to, uh, um, uh, um, to uh, satisfy its role in a fiber optic link. We have also described different types of fiber optic connectors that you may come across uh, uh, in uh, 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 different applications. We also talked about a few important uh, aspects of uh, fiber optic connectors, uh, a few important uh, constituents of a fiber optic connectors such as uh, end phase, ferrule, etc. 
Uh, and finally, we spent certain time talking about the importance of a clean end face of a connector, uh, um, um, the, uh, certain implications or consequences of uh, dirty uh, end faces on uh, the performance of the entire system. And at the end, you know, we talked about uh, uh, practical aspects of uh, how how uh, a proper uh, inspection procedure should uh, be uh, implemented uh, to uh, check whether the, the, the end face of a connector is clean and finally how to clean uh, the end face that would result in a, a contamination free end face of a connector and ultimately uh, a, a, a good performance of the of the system. Uh, so that's everything for today, folks. So next time we are going to be uh, moving on to uh, next uh, important uh, uh, um, uh, aspects aspect of a uh, fiber optic uh, 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 link. We're going to talk about uh, yet another category of uh, fiber optic connections, and that's going to be uh, fiber optic splices. Uh, so uh, uh, please um, um, uh, review the material that's been covered today and uh, be ready for our next challenge, which is going to be fiber optic splices. See you next time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.